are listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello there. In this tutorial, we are talking about IELTS vocabulary for the speaking exam. We're going to be looking at modern technology. Technology is a very frequent topic and it's totally understandable. Nowadays we are surrounded by technology and it makes sense for you as a student just to dig a little bit deeper. Like ask yourself these questions. Why do you use technology? What benefits does it bring? Uh, where's the technology made? What can you do with technology? You know, and even just go through, I don't know, just go through the six question words in English. How, what, where, when, why? Go through those. What technology? When do you use it? Why do you use it? How do you use it? Um, and by doing this, what you'll be able to do is probably discover blind spots whereby in your mind you think, oh yeah, I can talk about technology. But when you actually get down to it, it could be more difficult than you had anticipated. So just writing out some sample answers from your own mind or even reviewing some sample answers but definitely writing them out uh, and finding those weak spots, not just in certain topics, not just in certain areas, but also look, drill down and look at the word choice. Can you upgrade the language anywhere? Are you using basic verbs? Are you using basic adjectives? Are you forgetting to put anecdotes in there? Are you using examples? You know, all of these kind of like small improvements, when they add up, uh, sorry, when you add them up, they definitely make a difference. It's what we've said before. It's called stacking the deck in your favor. Stacking them up, all these small improvements, and eventually um, you can get the score that you want to, be it band 7, 8, or 9. Right then, in this tutorial, what we'll do is I will read through some sample answers for speaking part one, uh, the cue card, and part three questions. Now, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, welcome and thank you for choosing this one. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm from England. I'm from up north, as they say. I don't usually, I don't sound like I'm from up north anymore. I lost my accent a long time ago. I lost my accent when I moved out of England and I moved to Spain and I started teaching English there and eventually I specialized in IELTS because I just love getting results for my students and you know if you're only doing I don't know conversation classes or even just grammar classes it's difficult to measure the improvements unless you give the students tests and sometimes they don't even want tests however with the IELTS this is serious this is serious. The student's going to take the test and whether you performed or not will clearly be shown after the exam. So this is why I decided to specialize in IELTS. However, I didn't really know how to teach IELTS a while ago, a long time ago. <laughs> Let's get the tense. <laughs> I didn't know how to teach IELTS a long time ago. So what did I do? I started this podcast and I started looking for experts, linguistic experts, grammar experts, pronunciation experts, speaking experts, listening experts, and I interviewed them. I interviewed them for this podcast. Then I tested out what they told me. I tested it out on my students. If it worked, it went into the online course. If it didn't work, I just uh, I obviously didn't include it. And yeah, then I released the course, but the students still were not getting results. Some, some students were, but some students were like, hey, I bought your course and they failed IELTS. And that, for me, being a results-focused guy, just did not add up. I was not happy. So what did I do? Well, I started correcting the essays for the students. And this way, when we combined the feedback, the students actually working and applying what they had learnt in the course, then we got traction and then we could offer the guarantee of jump to band seven or it's free. So if that sounds like something that would benefit you, I mean, it's not just band seven, it's band eight, band nine. Uh, the guarantee is for band seven, but we have students all the time uh, jumping bands just because 
um, the adaptable nature of the class. You know, if you're writing at band seven, then our tutors will push you to go for band eight. Likewise, if you're writing at band eight, we'll push you to go for band nine. And yeah, that's how we get results day in, day out. And that's why we're always able to have students available for the success interviews when we ask them how they did it. So without further ado, let's jump into today's class about technology. So hopefully you've got a pen to make, to make the most of this tutorial. And I'll just quickly give you some vocabulary and you could play vocabulary bingo later during the class. That means when you hear one of the terms that I said before, you just mark it off your list. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at some useful vocabulary. Access to the internet and the internet. 99% of the cases is the internet. And this is unique. I had a student the other day and they always used internet without the article and it's a mistake, a very common mistake I see when I'm correcting essays day in, day out. So the internet. Another term, advances in technology. It's basically a progressive forward movement in technology. Back up your files. Rapidly obsolete. Become rapidly obsolete. Okay? It just means to quickly come out of date, uh, to quickly become out of date. Computer literate. Wow, this one rings a bell. I remember at my dad's shop when they installed a computer and the elderly staff were scared of it. They were definitely not computer literate. Okay, computer liter literate is adequate knowledge of a computer. Okay, we've got a few terms there. Glued to the screen. We all know what that means. <laughs> internet access, obviously having the ability to enter the internet. Internet of things, this is an exciting one. This is where you've got your coffee machine connected to the internet, your vacuum cleaner, your um, speaker. This is the internet of things. I find this fascinating, this one. Online piracy. The older listeners will be very familiar with this, maybe. <laughs> Downloading the old MP3s. Uh, now it's all streaming. But it just shows you how fast technology works. State-of-the-art technology, Tesla comes to mind. Um, to log in, to just sign into your computer, to upgrade your computer system, uh, to get a larger, quicker, more modern computer. Wireless hotspots. I don't usually use hotspots that much. It's just like, hey, have you got Wi-Fi? Um, yeah. So keep an, keep an ear out for those phrases as we progress. So let's go. Typical speaking part one question. Obviously, after you have answered, are you a student? Are you working? What do you want to do in your free time? You know, the soft questions just to warm you up, get you comfortable, get you settled down. So let's go. What type of technology do you use in your home? We have a number of labor saving devices, including state of the art technology in our kitchen. These appliances include an induction stove, a dishwasher, and an internet-enabled refrigerator. All are connected through the Internet of Things, so we can re remotely control them. Are you comfortable using modern technology? Well, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to use technology today. It's all about booting up, logging in, and then clicking on the icon that will take you to your favorite application. On the single occasion that my computer crashed, I called someone to I called someone in to reinstall the programs. Otherwise, I'm comfortable. How do you keep your computer and data secure? I always shut down the computer at night. I back up my files to a hard drive and I always keep hard copies of important documents. I'm very careful with my privacy settings, especially in wireless hotspots. Okay, so notice there, we're not going to put in a ton of effort into answering these couple of sentences, but ideally, if you have like high level, higher level techniques, um, you might want to save those, keep your, dry, keep your powder dry, as they say um, in England, 
just basically means save some of the your best techniques for later. You don't want to keep on repeating and using them and using them. What do I mean by techniques? Well, I'm working with a student at the moment and I'm teaching her how to, you know, add some contrasts using um, comparatives such as whereas. I'm teaching her how to add anecdotes, how to answer hypothetically, all of these. And these are useful techniques and you can definitely use them in your, um, what do you call it, in your answer, especially for part two and for part three. In fact, I'd recommend if they don't come naturally to you, then add them to your part two because there you have the opportunity to set it up and it will still appear natural. Whereas in part one and part three, you have to be a little bit more spontaneous and it's not as easy to set up. So let's go. Speaking part to QCAD, describe an item of modern technology that is most important to you. In this type of question, you should describe the type of technology that you use, how long you've been using it, how, frequent, how frequently you use it, and how it is a necessary part of your life. Again, we have the how, the why, and this is an invitation for you to develop it develop your answer. Let's have a look at this sample answer. My laptop is the most important digital appliance in my home. I've had a laptop for years, but I've recently upgraded my computer. I'm computer literate, I study from home, and I need internet access to do my research. Advances in technology have also made it possible for me to work from home, surf the web in search of freelance opportunities. In my leisure time, I download, mus I download books and music from the internet. I pay for these via electronic fund transfer. I don't, I, don't condone, I don't condone online piracy as I value the arts and, I, and believe that the authors and songwriters should be rewarded for their work. I use social media networks to keep up with my friends and family across the globe. And I also shop online from time to time. Okay, quite a straightforward answer there. Not really super technical, but the vocabulary is there. Social media networks, shop online, upgraded my computer, advances in technology, computer literate. It's not bad at all. Lots of topic specific vocabulary there. Personally, if I was reviewing this and this student was working with me, I would say, okay, can we add in some contrasts here, you know? maybe jump from different time frames for example um i don't i don't condone online piracy um as i value the arts however i do have a few friends that don't hesitate in pirating films or using torrents to download books but i used to do this when i was a kid when i was a teenager but i've matured a little bit and i don't think it's appropriate nowadays you see, it's a little answer like that. We've got a contrast uh, between myself and my friends. Also, I've got a contrast between what I used to do when I was a teenager and nowadays. In, this invokes the past tense. And yeah, and it, it's so easy to incorporate these in task to in part two of your cue card. Also, I mean, I'm saying it's so easy because you've got um, you've got that preparation time before you start. Likewise with the conditional, it can be quite easily and effortly, effortless, effortlessly integrated. Um, I'll give you an example. I use social media networks to keep up with my friends and family across the globe. If I didn't have these networks, it would be extremely difficult um, to maintain contact with my family. I guess I would have to use pen and paper and that would most likely take a long time. There we go, two conditionals in right at the end, just a nice little um, boost to your score. Next one, part three questions. Now we know these are going to be getting more abstract. We know they're going to be a little bit more difficult, perhaps a little bit more tedious and more than likely, they are going to be questions that you, really, you haven't really 
um, thought about or you haven't have never really ever answered them in your life you know like for example it's very unlikely a tutor or a friend or a, an employer will come up and say hey do you think that there are any disadvantages to modern technology it just doesn't happen all right um, so what I'm saying is that it's definitely because of the unusualness of these questions it's more than necessary to get ready and by that I mean writing out your answers uh, and we can think that we would be able to answer them because oh okay I know about technology but don't make that mistake listen this is important it's it's the difference between like experiential knowledge and uh, maybe like passive knowledge. So we might think we'll be able to, we might think we're competent at explaining the disadvantages of modern technology. And we probably could, but the answer is going to be mediocre. It's not until you put pen, and pa pen to paper or even you start speaking about it. It's not until that moment that you might or most likely realize there are some blind spots. There are some blanks in your vocabulary. And with a little bit of thought be prior, a little bit of preparation, you could probably improve your score by at least 20%. So what do you do? Well, you record your answer, you listen to it again, look for opportunities to improve, look for that rich, look for simple improvements with the adjectives, look for improvements to add more grammatical features, such as, I don't know, conditionals, comparatives as we've as we've mentioned before there's definitely so much room for opportunity so just do not go into the exam and um, thinking that you can wing it thinking that you can do the speaking exam without preparation it's the fastest and most efficient way to give more money yet more money to british council and idp so let's go anyway do you think that there are any disadvantages to modern technology I think that there are several disadvantages. Security can be a problem with people hacking into the internet. Also, modern technology tends to become rapidly obsolete. So we become more and more a throwaway society. People are also losing physical contact with another as they become glued to their screens. Yeah, that's not a bad answer. But as I said before in previous tutorials, let's add an example. Let's just build up the answer um, build up our vocabulary score and it's super simple for example my brother was worried about losing so much time with social media that he just deleted all the applications from his phone deleted his account from his desktop uh, browser and now the only way you can contact him is with SMS you see so there, it's much richer explanation and I'm just making it easier for the examiner to give me points, which is what I want. <laughs> I don't want to see this examiner again. I want to pass, I want to go, I want to move to Canada, get to Australia, live in the UK. I want to get a move on with my life. <laughs> Next one, in what ways do you think people will benefit from technologies in the future? Emerging technology has the capacity to change our lives in so many ways. Robots and artificial intelligence are both reducing the amount of tedious work required in a wide range of industries and professions. We can also get expert advice from across the globe using an internet connection. Okay, not a bad answer. Couple of sentences. Again, personally, I think an anecdote or an example just helps you fill out your answer gives you a little bit more time and also with these anecdotes and examples more often than not you know what you're going to talk about so you're not having to freestyle it you think ah, okay in this one I'm going to talk about IBM or in this one I'm going to talk about a report that I read a few weeks ago for example I read a report a few weeks ago that said that we're fastly we're quickly maybe heading towards a jobless economy whereby robots do all the work. I think this would be kind of exciting, but also possibly dangerous. So 
It's a tricky question. <laughs> okay, and that's another useful technique actually that I was teaching one student the other day, just to summarize your answer. Just bring it back to the question, make the examiner's job easier, make it just crystal clear that you've finished answering. Final question, in your opinion, what are the basic computer skills that every person should have today? All the information we require is available on the internet, so everyone should be able to boot up a computer, log in, and know how to use a search engine. Everyone should have access to the internet so that they can surf the web. For example, uh, my partner recently started freelancing, and sometimes she asks me questions, and I'm always just saying, just ask Google, ask Google. And I think that just having the ability to phrase your question correctly is an insanely valuable skill because it opens the doors to so much more knowledge. You see that in that example that I gave, it um, pushed me into giving an idiomatic expression, which is another kind of like tick box feature for points in the exam. Open the door to uh, answers and a world of knowledge, for example. So there we go. That's it from me today. Thank you very much for listening. If you're, uh, if you're serious about improving your score, or if you're just struggling and taking the exam again and again and again, then please get in contact. You can sign up for our newsletter at ieltspodcast.com. And once you sign up, you'll be able to get the uh, discounted uh, essay correction service. And you'll be able to even get speaking feedback, which is becoming very popular as well. So go to ieltspodcast.com, sign up, and let us help you improve your IELTS score. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day and keep on moving. IELTSPodcast.com.